What's up, guys? We're going to talk about the Bad Boy E Magnum electric zero turn lawnmower. And we're going to talk about its batteries and charging, some of the best practices and things that Bad Boy recommends, which isn't too much. They don't give us a lot of information. So I kind of track down some best practices for lithium ion batteries. I've never owned a electric car, not yet anyway. So a lot of this stuff I didn't know. I come from a gas world and this is all new to me. Like, yeah, we have batteries that we use on all your power tools and equipment, but this is kind of the first time it's mattered, I guess you'd say. So let's get into some of the uh, tips and tricks and best practices. Basically, the, the key factors are how you charge your batteries, the temperatures that you charge your batteries at, and then how you store your batteries. So the goal and idea here is to aim for a 30, maintain your batteries at 30 to 80% charge. You don't really want to deplete them below 30% and you don't really want to charge them over 80%. And that's something that's a little new to me. I did know that I wasn't supposed to discharge my battery all the way, but I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to charge it all the way up. I always kind of thought of it as a gas tank or anything else. You fill it till it's full and then you run. But um, what I've learned or what I am learning is that when you fully deplete a battery or you fully uh, charge a battery, it puts a lot of stress on the cells within, side, you know, with, within it. And that stress causes it to kind of break down and uh, I guess deteriorate over time. You get um, less longevity the more stress the battery is under. So instead of thinking about it, instead of thinking about your charge like fuel, like a gas tank, I guess kind of think about it more as eating. And I'm definitely not one to be given any advice on that. But the analogy goes that you're only supposed to eat to your full, not to when you're stuffed. And same with your batteries, you know, eat, charge them to 80%, not 100% where they can't move and they're stuffed. It puts a lot of stress on the system. So there's that. Basically, stick with Bad Boys Charger. Don't use any third party things you find on eBay or Amazon or whatever, get your chargers straight from Bad Boy. Make sure they're the legit proper ones. I've seen that on lots of products. You want to make sure you get the official one. Also, you want to charge your batteries at room temperature. So if you've been outside running these, one, these get hot as you use them. Two, sometimes it can be hot outside. You're going to want to let them cool down. And a lot of chargers have uh, sensors and things on them that prevent damage for that. Bad boy doesn't tell us what they're doing here. So I don't really know, but I'm assuming that it's got some safeguards, but just for your own peace of mind, charge at room temperature. The next thing I wasn't really aware of when charging batteries is you're not supposed to leave them on the charger or plugged in when you're not using them. And for me, I would have just parked this thing in the garage park it in your shed, whatever, you get done with a cut and plug it in, walk away till next week and never would have thought twice about it. And apparently that's not the case. And it does say that in here, once a battery is charged, don't leave it on the charger. You're supposed to unplug it. And that's kind of uh, a new idea to me. I don't know how good I'll be at remembering that. So if you can, if you're thinking about it, only charge it to 80%. Don't leave it plugged in for you know weeks at a time or a week at a time. Once it's charged, unplug it. And then you can even plan ahead a little bit. If say you get done with your cut, just park it, don't do anything. You know, if you didn't drain it below 25%, just leave it. And then the day before you're gonna do your next mow, so let it sit all week the night before plug it in, let it charge, and then go out and run. So um, that's that's kind of a, a, a tip that I didn't really realize with a lot of the 
<clears throat> people that use lithium ions in their cars and whatnot, that's something that they'll that they'll do to help extend some longevity in these things. Um, temperature is a really key factor with these batteries. If you're in the uh, desert southwest, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, you know where you're hot. You're gonna have uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit more work if you want to get some life out of these things. You don't want to storm in your garage or in your shed when it's 115 out. So every time you get done using this thing, you need to bring it into a climate controlled area. Basically, you want to maintain these batteries between 50 and 85 degrees. That's the best practices. Bad Boys kind of extended that that range. They say in this manual here between, I think, like uh, 40 and 104 degrees. So you get a little bit more wiggle room, but for the, those of you in the desert, you're going to want to bring them in uh, when you're not using them. And then likewise, for those of us uh, in cold climates, when you're done for the season, you're going to want to make sure you bring these in into a climate controlled area. You don't want to let them stay out in your garage or shed where they're going to freeze all winter long. Speaking of storage, if you're going to store for an extended period of time, like those of us do in the that have cold months in the winter, you're going to want to get your charges down to about 60% and store it there. You don't want to store it at 100%. Um, likewise, you don't want to store them when they're empty. So uh, keep them around 60% store them at room temperature. And then if you're going more than three months, you can even throw them on your charger, take a look. If they get below 30%, bring them back up to about that 60% when you're storing them. So how long can we expect our batteries to last? Well, nobody knows at this point. We're going to guess three to five years. You might be able to get a little bit longer out of it if you follow kind of the best practices. Basically, you get 500 to 1,000 charges per cycle. And after you hit that, batteries kind of drop down to about 80% efficiency and they just taper off over time. And because this is so new, we don't really know what the story is going to be. But if electric vehicles and some of the other larger products use lithium, ion batteries, you can kind of expect three to five years. And replacement batteries, I think right now for the eight amp hours, they're like 320 bucks today. So, it, it, you know, when you get six of them, it's going to add up. So you want to do the best you can to maintain them and uh, extend the longevity. Now, one of the good features and good things about this mower is that there is six individual cells. So if one of these batteries fails, all you have to do is replace that one battery. And likewise, say you had one fail, you can still use your mower. It would just, um, you can run it off the five slots or whatever. The whole thing doesn't go inoperable. You'll just get less capacity, less runtime because you're having one battery that isn't working. But um, the whole mower doesn't get shut down if you have one battery that fails or if you've got a couple batteries that are degrading, you can rotate those in and, in and out um, over time, which will help you, which is a really nice feature about this mower. Not, not all mowers and then especially not all big electronics that require these batteries have that. Sometimes it's like a big suitcase item. You either got to take the whole thing back in to get serviced, everything else. This one you just pop in and out. Speaking of swapping batteries in and out, another good feature of this bad boy is all of their batteries are compatible across all of their power tools. So if you have a chainsaw or a trimmer or a blower from bad boy, these same batteries will work in that equipment and those batteries will work in this mower. The biggest thing you got to uh, consider is your amp hours. So this mower comes with eight amp hour batteries, whereas the uh, smaller hand tools, I think, range anywhere between two to five amp hours. Um, 
if you're buying batteries specifically for this mower, you kind of want to make sure you get the, the larger ones. And basically the larger one doesn't give you any more power. It just gives you a longer run time. So a two amp hour battery will work in this mower. You're just not going to get nearly as long of a cut. So eight hour for this big machine is the way to go. But if you have some chainsaws or or other equipment like that, those batteries will work in this and vice, vice versa. Those This battery will work in those devices as well. So that's a really cool thing if you're in that bad boy universe. Um, <clears throat> me, I haven't used any of that stuff. I don't know. I've got Makita for it all. I might be in the market for a chainsaw and maybe I'll go with bad boy because now I got some bad boy batteries. We'll see how that works out. So this mower comes with four uh, 80 volt, eight amp hour batteries stock with it. It has a slot for six, so you can purchase more. As far as what people are getting for run times, we really don't know. There's not a lot of information out there. There's maybe like two Reddit posts and they're varying and they're different. So as far as what we get for how long, I wanna say, uh, bad boy advertises that you can get one acre out of this. I've got half that, so we'll see. We'll see what we do, what we get. One of my biggest gripes about this uh, bad boy wall charger is this manual is basically your lifeline. One, they don't have it online yet, which I'm gonna lose this. I'm gonna ruin it. We need a digital version of that. But then beyond that, it's 2025, guys. So if your charger or your batteries ever have a problem, we're still using the blinking light Morse code system, where if you have three blinking lights followed by two steady long blinking lights and you set that to the rhythm of dark side on the moon, it'll tell you that, you know, this is the problem. So. I don't understand why we can't just have a dis digital display. It's really not not that difficult. Just put it on the charger, say, okay, you've got this failure. It gives you, you could even give a code, but just have a digital display that this is what's going on. This is the reason, here's how to troubleshoot it. You got two pages here worth of error codes and it's all some, Blinking green light, slow flashes every three seconds. This is what this means. Blinking battery, quick flash every one second. Solid green, solid red, blinking red. Blinking red for four seconds. Blinking red, alternatively green, so on and so forth. Like this is just, the whole reason we buy these premium electronic equipment is convenience and to make things easy. This doesn't make things easy. Just give us a display, tell us what's wrong, I don't want to have to do Mickey, Mickey, you're so fine, blinky red, yellow, bad, whatever it is. Like, we're past that. So that's uh, my biggest gripe on that charger. All right, that about does it. I hope that I was able to give you some information on the best ways to kind of maintain and take care of your new lawnmower batteries. I don't really know what I'm doing, so... Don't blame me. Blame Bad Boy for not including this stuff in the manual. I'm just going out there and reading stuff and passing along to you. So hopefully, hopefully we're doing the right thing. Still haven't got to use it yet. It's been raining and raining and raining. So as soon as I can get out there and get some real world use, I'll let you guys know how it goes and let you know what sort of range I'm getting out of this. So we'll talk to you soon.